cool, it's a bit nippy today guys. I just popped up to put some hot water on the pond because it's solid, it's ice everywhere, look, look at this. And I want to get my um, secateurs to there. Ah, the other ones must be at home. Yeah, I just wish you could have sharpened these up. It's that time of year, isn't it? Whew. Gee, oh, look at those trees, aren't they pretty? I'll get a picture of them, hang on. I ain't staying here long. <laughs> there we are, treetops all covered in frost, look. Jesus, it's cold up here. Right, that's me. Catch you back home. Well, you're right, guys. Sort of end of November time, and uh, well, I'm going to give me tools of sharpen, or well, some of them. Um, I've got three, I've got more than three, but I've got three different types of secateur and my knife. I've got a couple of knives. Now, they're kept sharp all year, but this time of year, you want to get around to cleaning them properly, take all that sap off and everything. So, we need a few basic tools, container to put any bits in. A wet stone or a diamond stone. You don't need this, but it's handy. Some emery paper type stuff or some Scotch Bright. Even a kitchen pan scourer. Um, got some lubricating oil, WD-40, some solvent. I'm using meths to clean the sap off. You don't need all of these, like I said, but they might come in handy and save you running around afterwards. Even a nail file will help you get some rust off. I got a little wire brush just in case. Paint brush, and I'll show you why I'm using that in a minute. Crosshead screwdriver, because all of mine are crossheads. Pair of pipe pliers to get things apart. Knife sharpener. And um, I've got Allen key set just in case, but I don't need them with these ones. I do do them the other one. And another important tool is a camera or a phone. Just to, if you've got to take things apart like these, these are these are the called the Felco ones, aren't they? Yeah. Or something like that. Felco Sovereigns, yeah. Something like that. Um, take a photograph. Lots of little bits to these. So I think we'll start off with the easiest and work upwards, eh? So, now these. These are my cheap and nasty. Let's cut the ragwort down or let's cut the chamomile down type secateurs. I don't use these very often. They're the weed ones, if you know what I mean. But they need a clean up, and I'm not going to take them apart and do this. They're cheap and nasty ones with a nylock nut in the middle, part of a set. So, all I'm going to do for this now, this is why I say I'd like a container. Oh, yeah, kitchen tissue as well. <laughs> One more thing before we start, I'm working on cardboard. I don't want to get me a tabletop all mucky. So, you can go straight in with your Scotch Bright with this. Now, when you're working, always work away from the blade. Now, this is the sharp blade. This is the blunt blade. Still got a bit of edge on it, mate. So always work away from yourself, look. So if you do slip, you're going to push your fingers away, not towards you. And you can do it on the table. Give it a push. Here we are. Now, see, it's, it's got the dirt off, but it's a little bit stuck there. So I'm going to put a tiny little bit of WD-40. Now, I don't like spraying WD-40 everywhere, so I put it in my little container. Here we are. I'll do for now. Oh, I smell. I'm going to just dip this in there and give it a... And you see already, look, that's why. <laughs> that's why I put the cardboard down. That's coming up all right. There's no need to take that any further, really. Same with this side. This side's got all the sap on it, look. I expect my phone's wobbling like mad there, isn't it? I'll do. Right, that's that side done. Get my fingers clean. Just going to give a quick wipe the other side. Same again, push away from yourself. And there as well. That's a bit more awkward, that one. That's it, that's fairly clean, that'll do. Like I said, these are my rough and ready ones. I'll spend a bit more on the time on the decent ones. And then they need a bit of a sharpen. So what I'm going to do with these, though I don't want these super duper sharp, I'm going to use a nail file. 
and all you do is just push, work out the angle and just push the nail file over the it's hard to do this so I'm right handed and my camera's over there there we are, it feels sharp already like I said I keep these tuned up all year long like I just take the little burrs off there and there what I'll do, now what I'll do, I'll um ooh, I'm going to give these all a protection with the proper oil later well no I'll do it now, let's do it now oh, this is what the brush is for so on the other side of the pot a bit of penetrate, a bit of oil and this is what the brush is for I'll do, nice and lubricated. Give that little bit there a go in as well because that locking mechanism slides well as a forward. That's right. Yeah, that's them done. One down, one down. Now the second one, <coughs> these are the anvil secateurs. Again, kept sharp all year, but they've got a bit of muck on them now. I'm trying to show you both angles here. Um, what should I use for that? I'll use that again. Now these, got to be careful, there's a sharp blade there. These ones. I've got a fairly deep groove in them, so that's coming out. Yeah, that's nice them clean. And the blades themselves are quite clean on these. I'm not going to take you. Oh, that's why I got the um, Allen keys, because it's got a hex, hex nut in there. I'm not going to take them apart, though, not this year. And they are, I'm not even going to bother trying to sharp those, sharpen those. They're razor sharp. A little splodge of oil on them. It's good oil this one, I don't know where I got this one from, I'm sure I got this from America. Yes I did, 11 ounces on it look, rather than, it's got grams as well but... Yeah, here we are, look, um, spray on products, Solon, Ohio. Must have got that when I was in the Navy, crikey that's got to be. That's 26 years old. <laughs> At least. <laughs> that feels better already. I'm going to give this little plastic bit a bit of a um, oiling as well because that's the slider and that's um, yeah, see it's a bit jammy sometimes. Oh there we are. Oh. Done. I'm not going to bother wiping the excess off them so I'll put those there as well. Um, I'll do the knife last. Let's, now these are what I call the complicated, look at these, look, they're covered in sap, filthy, dirty, look. So this is where we take the photograph, both sides, just in case. Oh, the phone's going mad today. Right, and what we got is centre nut, a Phillips screw there, a Phillips screw there for the lock. I'm not going to take that off. Phillips screw, I'll take that off straight away. And oh. into the pot with that, and the little Bart Simpson thingy. <laughs> right now, we've got my pipe pliers, and all I'm going to do that is undo the center nut should be loose anyway because you don't do these up tight this is what that Bart Simpson's for but we'll go through that when we rebuild it yeah a little bit gummy that's the locking nut see it's all uh it's got a cog on the outside which will become evident in a minute there's the plate Ooh, a bit of rust under there push it in a bit let's get that spring off there we are oh Spring off, top off, put that in there, and there's the bottom blade. And we leave the locker, and there's the top blade, and the top blade comes off. Pivot bolt, and the top blade comes off with sharpen as well, and that's a Phillips screw. So 
So that's all the bits, look. Let's lay them all out for you. There's a bit more to it, isn't there, than there is the uh, simple secateurs. There we are. Let's put the little bits in. And all we do now is clean everything to start off with. So, a bit of mess with this one. Get the sap off first. Might not be much on there actually, like, it's hard to tell initially. There's a mess. Oh, I love the smell of mess. Reminds me of the old Mamod engines. Again, push away from the blade. There are proprietary products you can use to clean these properly, but this is all household stuff really, isn't it? And for your sanity and to get the video moving along a bit, Every component was cleaned with a WD-40 or the meths or the oil and a scouring pad. Bit of wiping here and there, all done. Okay, then that's about as far as I want to go, really. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to quickly... Now this, blade, this part of the blade doesn't have an edge on it, but I just want to clean the edge up a little bit. So again, I'll just use this nail file for this. Don't ask me why I've got a nail file. Just take any little rough burrs off. So I'm not putting a, I'm not sharpening it, I'm just cleaning it really. See look, it's hard to show you, we got a bright edge there now, look. And do the same the other side. Okay then, that's the uh, that's that little bit done. See, it's a bit cleaner. Look, I'm not sure how shiny these were when they first they were they were new, you know. So it's it's got to be quite a few years now, so I can't remember that far back. But I'm just going to take do the same on the back side of this blade. Just to see where we are. That's all. There we are. See, that's a good, that's, look, that's, it's so hard to do this. You see that is shiny all round the edge, so we know there's a good blade there. No big chunks out of it. And the front, well, not on the bottom, well, I'll do this bit here. No, I won't. Right, hang on then, I'll show you. Right, that's good that. I'm glad I've done that because, now I'm going to try and show you this. Let's find something to point with. I don't know if you can see that on there. Can you see that? Yeah. Right. This blade has got three angles on it. We've got this one here. We've got the shiny one there that's leading to the cutting edge and the cutting edge is a lot sharper. So what they do, they go down like that. The next bit goes down a bit more like that, and the last bit goes down like that. And that's what gives you the strength. If it was tapered all the way the same, it would just go blunt, you know what I mean? So what we do now then, we're going to clean this, we're going to sharpen this, so what we need then, we need oil stone. And this one, even though it's a diamond stone, which is a bit weird, it says use wet. And it's, it's a very fine one, so I'm going to use the oil on this. I don't, I don't like spraying oil, but... I think you can use water with this one actually. So what we're going to do, we're just going to push away from ourselves at the right angle. You can see there's, that's the, it's, it's hard to, I've been doing this all my life so it's, it's easier to do than talk about. There's the flat, there's the first angle, there's the second angle and there's the third angle. So all I'm going to do is just gently You might be able to see it on this, this camera, but the, the oil's going dirty, so it's working. It's not going to need a lot, because, like I said, I look after them, so... Now, carefully. Oh, that is sharp. That is sharp already. 
tried to do this. That'll do. That'll do for me, I think. There's no point being much sharper than that. Yeah. Right, guys, I think that's it. So what we've got to do now is start rebuilding things. Now, this is where your photograph comes in handy. So. <laughs> oh, dear me. Right. Screw Bart back on, and you'll notice, see, look, you can slide it backwards and forwards. So what we do now, then, we get your cog in the centre and tighten up until the blades are just as you like them. No headache. Headache is when they rock side to side. That's an old navy term for a dodgy blade. Okay, nearly there. A little bit tight, maybe. A little bit. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's about it. And what we do then, we push Bart into the cog with as many teeth engaging as possible. I'm trying to do this. It's a bit awkward. Tighten the screw up. Give it a go. Can you hear them? Pretty good. I nearly cut my microphone off then. Spring's okay, doesn't need lubricating, but we'll do that in a second anyway. It's easier to handle when it's not lubricated. Put him back on the pips there. And there we have, all ready to go for next year. And it, oh, look at that, locks perfectly in my fingers. So what I can do now then, all the bits have been used up, nothing left over, it's a good sign. A little bit more oil in there. I'm just going to give it a good brushing. And the spring this time as well. There we are, guys. I think you'll be happy with those. I certainly am. I'm going to leave those. I'm not going to lubricate and not to wipe those off either. Last up's my gardener's knife. Two blades on it. We've got the curvy blade. Which is absolutely filthy. And we got the oh, the budding blade, which is a bit cleaner, obviously used less. So that is razor sharp. I'm not even gonna bother sharpening that one. But if you were, once again, oil stone, top of oil on it. And then just figure of eight motion. You can feel where the the, the angle is because it sort of doesn't rock it just sits there and the same the other side. Yeah that's perfect. The curvy blade was quite dirty. It took a while to clean it off. Surprising how quickly the sap builds up. Um, I used uh, oily scotch bright for that. And then it's onto the sharpening with my kitchen knife sharpener. And this one's got a roughing cutter and a honing cutter, so that's pretty good. I don't expect this will work now. This paper's a bit damp now, but... Oh, crikey, there we are. <laughs> Right, like I said, I'm happy with all this. Put these away. They all work, so yeah. Any bits of wood left? Here we are. I'll do. And these ones are as much use as a chocolate fire guard, but they're they're okay for weeds. You know what I mean? Okay, I've probably gone on a bit too long already. Yeah, quiet, Danny. Uh, but I just want to show you the difference between the angles on the blades. Difference between cheap and nasty and decent, really. So for bypass secateurs, you'll find blades with either one, two or three angles on them. And when I say yeah, bypass, think scissors. That's the easiest way to think of them. These drawings aren't accurate, they're just a representation of the concept, if you know what I mean. You can see here just how much sharper a one angle blade is. That pink bit is very sharp at the tip, but also very easy to damage.
when you come to restore the blade back to a sharp tip, you need to take an awful lot of metal off. And this is why when you're in a garden centre and you're feeling how sharp the blade is, the very, very sharp ones like this, probably quite cheap. The more professional bypass secateurs will have two or three angles. We're jumping straight into the three angle one here. The edge of this type is more robust in the first place, so harder to damage. And when you come to sharpen them, there's a lot less metal to take off and you're up and running in no time. And it's much the same story with the anvil secateurs and knives. These have a bevel on both sides of the blades and again they come in one or two angle versions. Damage the one angle type and once again you've got a lot of metal to take off. Initially they may seem like a good buy, in the long run, hmm, yeah. The double bevel with two angles, a lot more substance behind it, more robust. And when you do damage it, because you will damage it, a lot less metal to take off and you're up and running again. It really is a case of you get what you pay for. And if you paid for it, you may as well look after them, haven't you? All right, guys, just a quick instructional video. Hope it helps a few of you anyway. I suspect the seasoned gard gardeners are shuddering watching me do that, but that's how I do it. Thank you.